What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on-feet video of the brand new standard variation of the Mizuno Rebula V1. Now I say standard variation because this is still a top-end model. It's the regular made in Indonesia version of the shoe, not the ultra premium, ultra expensive made in Japan model, which retails for $100 more than this one that I'm holding in my hands. I made a video on the made in Japan model not too long ago. And in this video, I'm gonna be comparing the two directly because there are differences between them and really determining whether or not it's worth it to spend the extra hundred dollars on the made in Japan variation. With that said, the shoe itself is still very good quality and very, very interesting. This is the Rebula V1, which is the top end model in the new Rebula line that more or less replaces the Wave Ignitus series in terms of the style of shoe that it is. Full kangaroo leather upper, control frame, memory foam inserts, really interesting design overall and excellent quality as we would expect from Mizuno. So we'll go over all the details in the video, take a look at how they fit and feel as well. So if you're interested in learning more, stick around. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, Unfortunately, they're not really available anywhere as of yet. You can buy the Made in Japan version right now, but the regular Indonesian made version, because the shoes just came out, don't seem to be available anywhere outside of Asian markets based on what I've seen so far. So eventually they will be available, be it in Europe or in North America. And as soon as they are available, I will have links available on the review page of my website, which is the first link down below in the description or the little pop-up on screen. But in the meantime, if you wanna be on the waiting list, as soon as they are available, you can sign up for the SR4U mailing list, which is linked down below in the description of this video. And as soon as these become available, either the, in Europe or in North America, I will send you guys out an email and let you know that these are now available for purchase. So as far as the official retail price, we don't really know at this point in time. I'm gonna assume it's around $200 versus $300 for the Made in Japan variation. And as far as how I got my pair, these were actually sent to me directly from Mizuno as review samples. So. Uh, again, kind of a complicated situation. I didn't get them with a box or anything like that. So I'm not sure if these come with any extras when you buy them, but this is what I have to show. The shoe is the most important thing here. Just wanted to let you guys know about actually being able to get a pair as of right now. So the Rebula V1, the regular Indonesian made version, basically it has all the same features as what you'll find from the more expensive made in Japan version. It's still a kangaroo leather upper and you still get the memory foam control frame, which you can see very clearly because of the texturing there across the entire upper. It gives the shoe a very, very unique modern look despite it being kind of a more old school, traditional natural kangaroo leather material which I guess we're seeing less and less of, but as of late, we've been seeing more and more of, which is kind of interesting. So as far as the quality is concerned, because that is obviously what you're gonna find as a major difference with made in Japan and made in Indonesia Mizuno products. And for those that don't know Mizuno all that well, they'll do a regular version of their top end model, which is made in Indonesia. They'll usually retail around $200. And then they'll do an ultra premium made in Japan version, which generally retails for $100 more at 300 bucks. And they tend to turn out as some of the best quality shoes that you can buy, but the, ma the made in Indonesia regular versions, the peasant model, if you will, is still just as good for the most part. There are some quality differences, but really I would say that 90% of the time, it's really what you can justify and what you deem to be worth it. If you really want the best of the best, then yeah, the made in Japan version, no matter what Mizuno model it is, is the way to go. But if you just want a good performing shoe that has pretty much the same features, the regular Indonesian made version, especially when you're talking about the Rebula V1, I think is a solid option. There's not a huge jump in quality between this and the Made in Japan model. So as far as the kangaroo leather is concerned, I talked about the Made in Japan Rebula as being one of the best quality leather shoes you can buy right now. And honestly, I would pretty much put this version on the same level. They feel excellent. If the Made in Japan version is a 9.9 out of 10 in terms of leather quality, this is a 9.8. I would say the Made in Japan version feels that little bit nicer, but these still feel excellent. They're top notch in terms of quality. The leather is soft, it's flexible, it feels incredible in hand. The touch that it provides is awesome. And again, the quality is as good as you're gonna find from pretty much any shoe out there. So that's definitely not taking a hit. 
even though your wallet will definitely take a hit if you buy the Made in Japan model. As far as the control frame is concerned, basically it's a memory foam underneath the actual leather itself, uh, which is why you have all of this texturing. So that in combination with the kangaroo leather upper that you have here, which the kangaroo leather is on the thinner side, is what's gonna provide the unique touch aspect from this particular shoe. The entire upper is leather as well. The only part that's synthetic is gonna be this little strip right here at the back where you see the Mizuno logo, which is pretty insignificant if you ask me. So the majority of the upper is leather, which is really, really nice. So you get a nice consistent touch. And what's cool about the combination of kangaroo leather and the memory foam, especially the way that they've implemented it, is you don't feel the actual foam or any of the reinforcement when the shoe is on your foot. It just feels like a natural leather shoe. But when you make contact with the ball, you get this really interesting natural, but also dampened sensation without taking away feedback because of the memory foam kangaroo leather combination. Now the liner is different on this version versus the Made in Japan model, which again, I don't think is very noticeable when you're actually wearing the shoes, but it is a difference that is worth pointing out. So overall, in terms of the touch experience, I'd say they're pretty well the same and both very, very good. I'm a big fan of this new upper. And also because of this internal reinforcement from the liner, as well as the foam cage, there's obviously pretty much no stitching on the upper. There's a little stitch right here and a little stitch right here. But other than that, the upper actually feels pretty solid despite being extremely soft and pliable when it's in your hand. So super comfortable, super natural, and really nice touch on the ball. Now the shoe does have an off-centered lacing system as you guys can see, which kind of takes away uh, or, or comes from the Wave Ignitus line, which is what this kind of replaces. Then you have a tongue, which is different from the Made in Japan version. And this is where I would say the quality is not quite as good. It's more of like a, almost like a foam based material, I would say, but uh, no padding to it. The, the tongue on the Made in Japan version is a little bit softer, a little bit more flexible and just feels more premium in my opinion. But also, in all honesty, once it's actually on your foot, you don't necessarily notice this all that much. It's just something that when you're feeling around with your hands, yeah, the Made in Japan version feels a little bit nicer in terms of the tongue, but does that translate into better performance, better feel, better experience? I would argue no. Uh, moving on to the rear of the shoe, you can see that they went for or opted for a low cut design. Very similar cut to what you would find from the Wave Ignitus series, internal plastic heel counter, a little bit higher at the back, which is kind of again, taken from that Wave Ignitus line. Nice stable sensation, really, really secure fit. It's got good depth to the fit in the heel as well. The heel liner is a little bit different, again, in comparison to the Made in Japan version. It's a smooth kind of synthetic material versus having the slight bit of texturing uh, on the MIJ version. But honestly, again, the difference in feel is pretty insignificant. Very, very comfortable, good amount of padding, really happy with the heel liner as a whole. The insole, fully removable, a little bit different again, mainly in the look and the branding, but for the most part, the feel is almost identical. So you can see it's fully removable and it features Mizuno's kind of rough lining material, which I would almost describe as kind of the rougher side of Velcro, but not quite that rough. And the reasoning for that is it allows your uh, your socks to actually grip the top of the insole, prevent your foot from sliding around on the inside, which is really interesting. And it's just a single layer of this white foam, nothing too fancy at all. Again, the foam on the Made in Japan version is a little bit nicer, but again, it's a hundred dollars more expensive for a difference that quite honestly, you're not really gonna notice once you're actually wearing the shoes. So again, up until this point, there's not a big difference between this version and the Made in Japan version, in my opinion. As far as the sole plate and stud pattern is concerned, it's obviously a very interesting and new design as well. This features their D-Flex grooves throughout the entire sole plate, so it's very, very flexible, and it has this nice natural sensation. I think it pairs very nicely with the soft kangaroo leather upper they've incorporated on the shoe, so flexibility is a key. And honestly, the sole plate and stud pattern identical to that of the Made in Japan version. I can't tell a difference between the two at all, which is a good thing if you don't wanna spend the extra 100 bucks. So the stud pattern, a completely new stud pattern as well, very different from what we got from the Wave Ignitus line, but their key technology that they've incorporated here, which is kind of interesting, is the stabilizer stud. So you can see these blue studs, they feature blue on the outside, which is a softer rubber material, and then the black piece protruding through the middle that's actually a harder plastic material. So the variation in stiffness or the added stiffness through the central portion of the stud means that it's not going to deflect or flex as much when you actually plant to strike the ball, which is something that honestly you wouldn't even really think about 
with most shoes, but Mizuno has thought of it here and they're basically claiming that this is gonna offer better stability and just better overall performance when it comes to shooting the ball. Is that reality? I would say no, it doesn't feel drastically different or different at all in comparison to shooting in a regular shoe with studs that don't have this same technology, but it's an interesting idea but ultimately something that I don't think has any kind of significant impact. As far as the performance of the stud pattern itself is concerned, you can see that they are kind of oval shaped studs uh, in that they're bladed in terms of length, but they're rounded all the way around. So it is kind of a hybrid in terms of being a bladed conical style stud pattern. They're all about the same size. They're all about the same length. You have some blades running through the middle of the forefoot, but ultimately it's not an overly aggressive stud pattern. It works quite well. I have no issues with it at all. And it is also a firm ground only stud pattern. So keep that in mind, not made for multiple different playing surfaces. Plus they do include the little rivet there at the front, a common characteristic with a lot of Mizuno boots, also featured on the Made in Japan model. And you can expect because of the build quality, because of the construction, uh, I guess standards that Mizuno has as a brand, you can expect these to hold up really, really nicely. Every experience that I've had with a Mizuno product is that they are extremely durable. So that is definitely something worth keeping in mind. If you are looking to stray away from one of the major brands, Mizuno, not to say they're not a major brand, but in North America and even parts of Europe, it's definitely not the most popular. So definitely something to consider if you are looking to buy Mizuno. And then finally, the weight of the boots. In a size 9 US, these guys weigh in at 8.15 or 8.2 ounces, which again, in comparison to the Made in Japan model is identical. There's pretty much no difference whatsoever. So in, over, in terms of overall weight, right at the eight ounce mark, not super, super light, obviously, but definitely not heavy either. They've got a nice solid feel to them. They don't feel heavy. Uh, and again, I just like the way that they feel in general. Obviously, if you want something super light, you're probably gonna be more interested in something like a Morelia Neo versus a Rebula V1. But still, I'm really happy with them. Eight ounces is definitely nothing to complain about. So, should you buy this version or the Made in Japan model for $100 more? It really is up to you. If you're asking me, the difference in quality and the difference in terms of the experience that both shoes are gonna provide is fairly minimal. Is the better quality Made in Japan version worth the extra hundred dollars it's definitely better quality but the quality difference is so minimal that again it really just has to depend on what you want what you're willing to pay for if i'm if you're asking me which one i would want i would want the made in japan version but do i think it is a way better shoe absolutely not the difference is i think it, to the point where if you wore both shoes with a blindfold and you didn't know what, what was on your feet, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The difference is that minimal to me. But again, everyone's gonna have their own opinion on this. I know a lot of the hardcore Mizuno guys swear by the Made in Japan stuff. And again, depending on the model, there is a bigger difference between the regular and the Made in Japan variations. But when you're talking about the Rebula V1, to me, the difference between the two is almost non-existent. Anyways, in terms of the look of the shoe, I think they look pretty cool. Obviously, this one being the Indonesian made version is just a solid black leather versus having that sparkle effect to it throughout the entire leather upper. You have a little bit of that sparkle effect in the synthetic part. So it's almost like the reverse of what you're gonna find from the Made in Japan model. But I have to say that I think I might prefer just the flat black leather that you have on this version versus the sparkly finish. To me, that's something that I don't know, if, if they're gonna be black, just make them regular black. They don't have to have that little bit of added detail to it. I don't think the Made in Japan version looks bad with the sparkle additive, but I just prefer this flat black look. You have the silver Mizuno logo right there on the lateral side, as well as right there on the heel. The Rebula branding right there on the tongue. This teal color within the liner, teal insole as well. And then of course the sole plate, which has some white, some blue, and some black all incorporated into it. And overall, I think it's a pretty cool looking shoe. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you like the look of the new Mizuno Rebula? That's enough about tech specs though. Let's take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So you can see on the right boot, I actually swapped out the black stock laces for some white and black grid pattern SR4U replacement laces, which I thought looked pretty cool because it kind of matches the, the very modern kind of, I guess, engineered design that you get or engineered look that you get from the actual comfort frame, uh, uh, not com comfort frame, sorry, the control frame on the upper with the memory foam. I just think it looks pretty cool together. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. If you are interested in a pair of SR4U laces for yourself, 
The website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description of this video. So obviously because it is a low cut shoe with a standard tongue design, putting them on is like putting on a normal pair of shoes, which you don't always get to say these days with a lot of the modern boots and their interesting quirky designs. So this is kind of a, a breath of fresh air um, to a certain extent, I would say. I really like this. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing a shoe like this, but obviously a lot of the big brands and I guess a lot of the younger generation, they like some of the new stuff, the one piece designs, uh, the mid cut stuff. And I, I like one piece uppers too, don't get me wrong, but something simple like this, there's really nothing wrong with it if you ask me. So I'm just gonna tie this one up as well. Again, the tongue, not quite as nice as the made in Japan version, but not really that different either once the shoe is actually laced up on your foot. So I'll tie this one up really quickly and we'll take a look at the shoes on feet. So you're probably wondering, okay, the quality difference doesn't seem to be that noticeable in hand. It doesn't seem to feel that different. Is the fit any different between these and the made in Japan version? And quite honestly, it really isn't different at all. It seems to be made on the exact same base. Technically the made in Japan versions, they sit on the last of the shoe or the last which is basically the, the, the form for the shape of the boot for 24 hours, which is kind of abnormal for a mass produced product. That's partially why they are more expensive is because there is more of a handmade aspect to them. But does that result in a much better fit and a much better shape in comparison to this cheaper Indonesian made version? I'm gonna argue in the case of the Rebula V1 that the difference is almost non-existent. It's really, really difficult to tell the difference between the two, be it the leather quality or the overall shape of the shoe. So overall, they're comfortable. They feel really good on feet. This is one of those shoes that I feel like I could wear them straight into a game, although that's never really a great idea. And because it is kangaroo leather, they'll soften up even more as you wear them in. And what's nice about the way they design this shoe is even without the stitching, it does feel like it's well reinforced. The boot has a nice solid sensation on feet. It doesn't feel like it's flimsy. It doesn't feel like it's gonna overstretch, which is definitely a good thing and very confidence inspiring. As far as the width is concerned, they've got some decent width to them. So overall, I'd say this is a shoe that's gonna fit just about anybody. If you have really wide feet, They'll feel a little bit snug at first, but again, they're leather, so they will stretch over time as you wear them in. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that is pretty much it, guys, for my review of the regular Indonesian-made version of the Mizuno Rebula V1. Really, really happy with them. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, they're not available as of yet, or at least as of me making this video. But if you guys wanna sign up for the SR4U mailing list, there will be a link to that down below in the description. Be sure to go ahead and check that out if you aren't signed up for that already. And I'll notify you as soon as these things become available because they are cheaper than the made in Japan version. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.